Good afternoon, all myself, Dr. Abhishek Tiwari. Today we are going to discuss unit processes in extractive metallurgy. So this is the outline of the presentation. First, we will discuss what is the scope of extractive metallurgy and then occurrence of metals in the nature and uh, then minerals and ores and uh, elementary concepts of mineral processing and theories of uh, combination and pressing and grinding equipment, equipment and their fields of application and limitations, laws of settling of solids in fluid type of classifiers and then their selection and performance. So what is the scope of extractive metallurgy? Basically, extractive metallurgy is a very important subject of metallurgical engineering in which processes and methods of extraction of metals from their natural mineral deposits are studied. The ferrous and non-ferrous extractive metallurgy have its facilities that can be categorized into mineral processing, hydrometallurgy, pyrometallurgy, and electrometallurgy depending upon the process adopted to extract the metal. So, occurrence of uh, metal in the nature, the, uh, the crust of the earth provides metals and it is a good source of uh, a, a good source uh, of metals and uh, mostly the metals occur in the nature in a combined state but sometimes they can also occur in free state. A native metal is a metal found in its uh, metallic state naturally either in pure form or in the form of an alloy most metals can't register natural processes like uh, oxidation corrosion etc hence only non-reactive metals like gold silver platinum etc are found in the native or free state most metals are obtained in the form of compounds and they need to be filtered from their impurities to be further used for various applications. Minerals are naturally occurring like inorganic solids with a crystalline structure and a definite range of chemical formula. Ores are concentrations of minerals in rock that are high enough to be economically extracted for use. All ores are minerals, but all minerals are not necessarily ores. Rocks. A rock is made up of two or more minerals and you need minerals to make rocks but you don't need rocks to make minerals all rocks are made of minerals minerals so what is mineral a mineral is composed of same substance throughout there are about 3000 different minerals in the world and minerals are made of chemicals either a single chemical or a combination of chemicals what is the difference between rock and mineral a rock is made up of two or more minerals, whereas a mineral is composed of same substance throughout and uh, an ore, a mineral occurring in sufficient quantity and uh, containing enough metal to permit its recovery and extraction at profit. Gang is an unwanted, commercially useless, rocky, earthy or sandy material that are found with the ores and these are the impurities that are to be filtered out at a later stage. So, what are uh, different ores uh, for various metals and uh, they, they occur in different forms like oxide, carbonate, sulfide, halide ores. So, in form of oxides for aluminium, it occurs in the form of oxide, Al2O3.2H2O and uh, copper in the form of cuprite that is Cu2O and iron in the form of hematite Fe2O3 and uh, tin in the form of cassiterite SNO2 and uh, carbonate ores uh, for calcium it occurs in the form of limestone CaCO3 zinc in the form of calamine ZnCO3 and iron in the form of cellarides FeCO3 and uh, sulfide ore so for zinc uh, it occurs in the form of zinc blend it's very important it's also in the examinations also copper copper glass cu2s and uh, lead galena pvs this is also asked in the examinations and uh, 
Mercury Cinebar SGS. This is also asked in the examination. Halide or sodium rock salt. Sodium occurs in the form of rock salt and rock salt uh, NaCl. Chloride or that is uh, fluorospar CaF2 and uh, silver is found in the form of uh, horn silver AgCl. So these are typical iron ores. Uh, you can see how they look like hematite in the form of Fe2O3 and uh, magnetite uh, Fe3O4, siderite FeCO3, pyrite FeS, limonite FeOOH dot NH2O, ilmenite FeTiO3. Copper ores uh, are found in the form of chalcopyrite CuFeS2, chalcosite Cu2S, covalite. CUS boronite 2 CUS dot CUS dot FES cuprite CU2O azurite 2 CUCO3 dot CUOH whole to S. Aluminium ores are found in the form of bauxite Al2O3 dot 2H2O corundum Al2O3 field spar NaAl Si3O8 cryolite Na3ALF6 Alunite KAL3 SO4 twice OH06 Kyolin Al2O3 dot 2 SiO2 dot 2 H2O Magnesium ores are found in the form of magnesite MgCO3 Dolomite MgCO3 dot CSO3 Epsom salt Mg SO4 dot 7 H2O Kizerite MgSO4 dot H2O, carnelite, KCL dot uh, MgCl2 dot uh, 6H2O. Calcium ores are found in the form of dolomite, MgCO3 dot CaCO3. This is also asked in the examination. Gypsum, CaCO3 dot uh, 2H2O. This is also very important for examination point of view. They can ask uh, to match the tables. And fluorospar, CaF2, calcite, CaCO3. Asbestos CSIO3 dot MgSIO3. Then uh, silver ores are found in the form of horn silver, AgCl, ruby silver, 3 Ag2S dot Sb2 S3. Gold ores are found in the form of calaverite, A Au, Te2, sylvanite, Ag. AU T2 Zinc ores are found in the form of zinc blend ZNS zincite ZNO Calamine ZNS CO3 Lead ores are found in the form of Galena PBS Angelicite PBSO4 Cerusite PBCO3 This is also asked in the examination Titanium or uh, rutile, this is very important for examination point of view. Rutile TiO2, ilmenite Fe, TiO3, tin or SNO, cassiterite SNO2, this is always asked in the examination if they ask about ores. Mercury, Hg or Cinebar, HGS, this is also very important for examination. Antimony, SB ores, uh, stibnite, SB2, S3, pyrar, gyrite, or dark red, silver, or AGT, AG3, SB, S3. Then, elementary concepts of mineral processing. Mineral processing, it's also called, called as old dressing, is the process of separating commercially the commercially <coughs> valuable methods from their ores so it has some unit operations like uh, comminution sizing concentration dewatering so comminution is particle size reduction sizing is separation of particle sizes by screening or classification and uh, concentration by taking advantage of physical and surface chemical properties and dewatering is 
based on solid liquid separation. So what are the theories of combination, crushing, grinding, equipment and the fields of application and limitations? Combination is reduction of solid materials from one average particle size to a smaller average particle size by crushing, grinding, cutting, vibrating or other processes. Combination may be carried out on either dry materials or slurries. Pressing and grinding are the two primary combination processes. Pressing is normally carried out on runoff mine ore, while grinding normally carried out after pressing may be conducted on dry or slurry material. In combination, the size reduction of particle is done by three types of forces, compression, impact, and attrition. Compression and impact forces are extensively used in crushing operations while attrition is the dominant force in grinding. Primarily used equipment in crushing are jaw crushers, gyratory crushers, and cone crushers, whereas rod mills and ball mills usually closed circuited with a classifier unit are generally employed for grinding purposes in a mineral processing plant. Pressing is a dry process whereas grinding is generally performed weight and hence more energy intensive. So what are the laws of uh, settling of uh, solids in fluid? Settling is a process by which particulates settle to the bottom of a liquid and form a sediment particles that experience a force either due to gravity or due to centrifugal motion will tend to move in a uniform manner in direction exerted by that force for gravity settling this means that uh, the particles will tend to fall to the bottom of the vessel forming a slurry at the vessel base for dilute suspensions the Stokes law predicts the settling velocity of the small spheres in fluid, either air or water. This originates due to the strength of viscous forces at the surface of the particle, providing the majority of the retarding force. Stokes law finds many applications in natural sciences and is given by W is equal to 2 rho p minus rho f g r square upon 9 mu, where W is the settling velocity, rho is the density and substrates P and F indicate particle and fluid respectively and G is the acceleration due to gravity, R is the radius of the particle and mu is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. Stokes law applies when the Reynolds number is less than 0.1. Newtonian drag. So this is another law of settling solids and fluid. Defining a drag coefficient CD as a ratio of the force experienced by particle divided by impact pressure of the fluid, a coefficient that can be considered as the transfer of available fluid force into drag is established. In this region, the inertia of uh, impacting fluid is responsible for majority of force transfer to the particle and CD is given by FD upon half rho f u square a for a spherical particle in stokes regime this value is not constant however in newtonian drag regime the drag on a sphere can be approximated by constant 0.44 this constant value implies that efficiency of transfer of energy from fluid to particle is not a function of fluid velocity as such the terminal velocity of a particle in a newtonian Regime can be ob obtained by equating the drag force to the applied force and resulting in the following expression W is equal to 2.46 rho p minus uh, under root of uh, rho p minus uh, rho f uh, gr upon rho f. Now, this is the third uh, law of uh, settling the distance transitional uh, drag in intermediate region between strokes drag and uh, Newtonian drag, there exists a transitional regime where the analytical solution to the problem of falling 
sphere becomes problematic and to solve this empirical expressions are used to calculate drag in this reason one such empirical equation is that of the seller and norman and may be valid for Reynolds number between 0.2 and 1000 and it is given by f is equal to f divided by rho f u square a is equal to 12 upon r Reynolds number into 1 plus 0.15 Reynolds number is to power 0.687 now what are the types of uh, classifier in the selection and performance so classification uh, refers to sorry for the spelling mistake classification refers to sizing operations that explore the difference in settling uh, velocities uh, ex exhibited by particles of different sizes classification equipment may include ore sorters gas cyclones hydrocyclones etc based on their separation principles classifiers are classified into weight classification and drive classification and under weight classification, we can have again four types of classifiers, mechanical classifiers, spiral, class, uh, spiral classifiers, hydraulic uh, uh, classifiers and uh, hydrocyclone classifiers and under uh, dry classifiers, we can have gravitational classifier, gravitational inertial classifier and centrifugal classifiers. So first uh, weight classifier weight classification is based on principle that the separation of coarse particles from fine particles by water or any other liquid in this technique coarse particles move faster than fine particles at same density high density particles move faster than low density particles at same size now industrial participation mm, classification for uh, weight uh, classifiers are as follows hydraulic classifier mechanical classifier and cyclones and the particles below a certain size and uh, density are carried away with the water flow whereas the coarser and heavier particles settle so first is mechanical classifier or this uh, we have a spiral classifier and the spiral uh, classifier is also called as uh, heli helical classifier a spiral, a spiral uh, classifier is a type of mechanical classifier. A spiral uh, can be of a single pitch or double pitch. Single pitch uh, spirals consist of one continuous spiral ribbon and the double pitch spiral has twice the racking capacity of a single pitch assembly and consists of two duplicate spiral ribbons. It is made by combining, sorry, for mistake. Come by combining a gravity settler of a rectangular section with a sloped uh, transport uh, transport uh, spiral for sediment. It consists of a semi cylindrical trough, a trough which is semi circular. You can see here the semi circular trough is there in the figure and uh, inclined to the horizontal. So, this is inclined in the uh, horizontal. The spiral classifier rotates uh, about the axis in the tank and the sediments at the lower end are collected by the spiral and uh, lifted upwards. Hydrocyclone classifier. Hydrocyclones are used in mining industry to separate uh, minerals based on density and size. Slurry is vigorously rotated in the cyclone which generates a radial force field and large and dense particles are driven to the outer regions and underflow while the small and light particles are attracted to the core and overflow so this is the typical figure for hydrocyclone classifier now hydraulic classifier hydraulic classifier is a device used to concentrate an ore based on difference between densities of ore and gang particles the process is called levigation the powered ore is feed into a conical reservoir. A strong current of water agitates and powered ore. The agitates the powered ore. Lighter gang particles rise up while the heavier ore particles sink down. Hydraulic classification consists of separating solid particles suspended in a liquid pulp into two distinct particle size fractions, fine or overflow and force 
under flow the principle of separation is based on effective size of the particles by difference in the elementation velocity in a liquid that this type of classification is made for particle sizes between 15 to 800 microns now dry classifier dry classifiers are based on the air flow digestion air classification is a process of separating categories of materials by weight differences in their respective aerodynamics characteristics dry classification using separation by centrifugal force typically covers the range of 5 micron to 150 micron the process consists of interaction of a moving stream air material particles and gravitational force within a confined volume the confined volume in which the separation takes place is called an air classifier gravitational centrifugal gravitational inertial classifier comes under dry classifiers now gravitational classifier gravitational classifier are designed for coarse separation in the range of 12 mass size to 100 mass size the feed material is spread over the width of the classifiers and drop as continuous feed curtain through top of the classifier air enters the classifier at low velocity through the front inlet and drawn through the feed curtain which is dropping in front of the angled vanes on the air outlet the air stream enters the feed curtain perpendicularly and draws final particles from curtain of the material the air current then draws the particles up almost vertical through the van wave gravitation uh, gravitational uh, classifiers are suitable for closing grinding circuits de-dusting of uh, coarser feeds and reducing uh, a high feed loading rate to a finer classifier and it can also be used as a density separator now gravitational inertia classifier the feed material enters the top of the classifier in a downward direction and the primary air enters the top of the classifier in a downward direction and the air makes an angle of uh, 120 degree change in direction and exits through the veins uh, carrying fine particles with it the coarse particles too heavy to turn fall to the bottom to be discharged by a valve secondary air injected below the veins uh, passes through the curtain of falling particles those particles near the cut point in the size are diverted by secondary air stream into an eddy current within the hard shaped uh, chamber you can see here this hard shaped uh, chamber and uh, fine particles uh, some captured as they enter the unit uh, and uh, other drawn to, from the eddy current are carried by exiting air to a fabric filter or cyclone for final recovery centrifugal classifier centrifugal classifier utilizes centrifugal forces in a similar way to cyclones to induce fine particle separation the classifier has high degree of separation accuracy and low maintenance requirements the classifier is used in conjunction with the dust collector and a system fan now these are the questions asked in the gate examination cyclones are primarily used for a combination and b concentration c d d watering and D is classification. So as we have read, uh, cyclones are a type of uh, classifier. So the correct answer is D classification. Hydrocyclone is a A crusher, B weight classifier, C dry classifier, and D magnetic uh, separator. So this is also asked in gate examination, and the correct answer is hydrocyclone is a weight classifier. Thank you for your attention.